Okay, uh, so this video is the fourth video of chapter eight and the last video talking about uh, sampling distribution. Um, so far, we talked about uh, what's a sampling distribution and uh, for the sampling distribution of X bar in particular, we looked at the shape of the distribution and the center of the distribution and the spread of the distribution. Uh, this time, we kind of do the same thing, but except uh, uh, rather than having a large sample size, what we can do with a small sample size uh, sampling distribution. Okay, so here's a sampling distribution with a small sample application. As an example, we'll look at some dishwasher soap. A particular brand of dishwasher soap is sold in three different sizes, 25, 45, and 60 ounces. 20% of the all purchasers uh, select 25 and 50% 45 and the remaining 30%. So there is a little table of the distribution. Here is what the size of it, that is X, and then probability of X, 20%, 50%, and 30%. Um, before we actually move on talking about sampling distribution, we can look at some uh, characteristics of the population. So expected value of X, so this is actually go back to your chapter six discrete uh, random variable case. When you have possible X's and corresponding probabilities, you can use this formula formation of X times probability of X, and then you can uh, come up with the, your expected value, right? So expected value is same as mean. So what you're gonna do is, uh, here is you're gonna multiply X and probability of X, multiply x and probability of x, multiply x and probability of x, and sum it up. And it become 45.5, and that will be your mean um, amount of uh, dish soap size. Notice that they actually don't sell the 45.5 on uh, dishwasher, right? But it's just average of all the dishwasher soap that is sold. So it's not necessarily the exact the value that you can actually get from the store. Um, standard deviation of X, again, there's a formula that you learned, summation of X uh, minus mu square probability of X times probability of X. So if you plug all those values there, you're gonna be able to get sigma of X, standard deviation of X, 12.13446 ons. So this is our population distribution, and this is discrete case. Okay, now we're gonna think about uh, sampling distribution. Let's start with actually very small sample. Say that uh, we have uh, two customers. Um, then they're gonna, two customers who actually bought the dishwasher, uh, dishwasher soap, uh, determine the probability distribution of X bar and X bar representing the average soap size of sample of two independent customer. So here is the customer one and here's a customer two. So you kind of uh, need to think about all the possible cases that they can um, by the dishwasher soap. So the first scenario is they, uh, the first customer buy 25 on, second one also buy 25 on. Second scenario, 25 on, 45, 25, 60, 45, 25, up until 60 and 60. Okay, so in a way, the customer one has a three choices, 25, 40, 60. Customer two also has 25, 45, and 60 three different choices. So if you think about all the possible cases, three times three, which is nine different cases, all the cases that you can come up with. Now in the sample of size two, we are interested in the probability, uh, the X bar, what's the mean of it, and then probability of, corresponding probability of that uh, value. So 25 and 25, if your data set is 25 and 25, the mean of the 25 and 25 will be 25, right? And probability of X bar, from the previous slide, the probability that the customer, each customer will choose the 25 on this 0.2. So 0.2 times 0.2 will be 0.04. So the, the very first yellow highlighted one will uh, should have 25 and 
0.04. And the second one, 25 and 45, the average of that will be 35. And then the probability of getting 25 and 45 will be 0.2 times 0.5, which is 0.1. You can go uh, on and on and on. For the last one will be 60 and 60. The mean will be 60. And then your uh, prob probability will be 0.3 times 0.3, which is 0.09. You can fill those out. Okay, so now we will be focusing on the last two columns because uh, our topic, again, what's the title of the, this chapter? Sampling distribution of X bar. We are actually interested in X bars and the probability of X bars. That's what we are uh, kind of interested in. And then if you look at the X bar value, you will find something interesting. Some of the values happened multiple times, 35, 35, okay? 42.5 happens twice, 52.5 also happens twice. So when you make a table, you probably want to consider those are happening twice and probably merge it, okay? So 35, for example, 35 and 35, you can just add 0.1 and 0.1 and, you know, probability that X bar is equal to 35 is 0.2. Does. So you can kind of do that. And then you can summarize that table like this. So 25 still 0.04, but there are two 35s and you add those probability up, it become 0.2 and so on and so on. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six different cases, and then there are corresponding probabilities. Okay, so that's the probability distribution. Now we want to think about where is the center of the mean, center of the X bar, and then standard deviation of X bar. And probably here it will be kind of hard to talk about the shape a little bit. I mean, you can draw a histogram, um, I guess, with the probability. It's um, not quite symmetric. Okay? It's a little bigger value here and smaller value at the end, but not quite symmetric, but you can, you can think about the shape a little bit, but more interestingly, we're going to talk about the mean of X bar and standard deviation of X bar. To calculate the mean of X bar, expected value of X bar, so you are using exactly the same formula as before. This time, instead of X, we're going to put the X bar in it. So, but the process is exactly the same. You are multiplying these two values and add up. And then you end up 45.5 ons, which is same as our original mu value, right? The population mean value, 45.5, which is consistent with what we've talked about it before. Whatever the sample size of uh, sample size we're talking about, the mean of X bar stays the same as mu, right? So that's actually assuring what we were talking about before. Okay, so your expected value of X bar is same as actually expected value mu. How about the standard deviation of X bar? Again, you put the formula in there and you're gonna get 8.5808. Remember that your mean standard deviation, standard error of the mean, has this formula, sigma over square root of n. So if you kind of plug those values, you're gonna actually have that. So you can either calculate your standard deviation using this formula, or if you know the population standard deviation, you can actually calculate it this way as well, which is consistent once more that uh, what the uh, sigma of x bar is. Okay, so that was the n is equal to two case. Can we do the same thing for n is equal to three or n is equal to four, n is equal to 10? Presumably we can, when n is equal to three, you will have three times three times three different cases, which is 27 cases. When n is equal to four, you're gonna have three times three times three times three, which is 81 different cases. 
it is doable, but uh, when n is even bigger than that, it gets really, really, really big. So uh, we know the idea of it, but we don't usually do it by hand because it's a tedious process. But assuming that we understand the basic idea of sampling distribution with a small sample size, here, when n is equal to two, um, can we use central limit theorem? And I mean, rather than um, calculating some of the probability based on the probability distribution. So for example, if you go back here, you can ask questions like, what's the probability that um, x bar is less than 30? Then you can say 0.04, right? Because less than 30 is only 0.04. Can we calculate the probability using like a, a normal distribution uh, central limit theorem? Can we do that? That's one of the mistakes the students will uh, often make. Uh, for this case, you really can't use the central limit theorem method because um, sample size is way too little and your population wasn't really normal. Right? It was just a discrete case. So, um, when sample size is not enough, we have to come up with all the possible samples and you cannot really use a central limit theorem. Okay, so a little summary of chapter eight. Once more, I wanna point out that when we talk about sampling distribution of sample mean X bar, we talk about shape and mean and spread of X bar. When we talked about large sample size case, we can use a central limit theorem and then um, uh, treat your X bar uh, like a normal distribution and then uh, calculate the probabilities. On the other hand, small sample size, unless your population is normal distribution, you can actually do by hand and one by one type of thing. But still, you can kind of figure out uh, distribution of X bar. My last question is, talking about all this, what do you think about sample mean X bar as a estimate of mu? Which means uh, we, I mean, since the very first uh, chapter, uh, we talked about that X bar is a good guess for mu. Is that true? Can we explain it using the, uh, the ideas that we uh, uh, talk about in chapter eight? Well, in a way, Rather, whether it's a small sample or a large sample, your mean, your center of X bar will always uh, be around mu. So X bar will be somewhere around mu is a good idea to uh, use X bar as a, a good guess of uh, mu. In particular, when sample size is really large, your center error of X bar is actually getting really small which means you're actually having a better chance to X bar to be very close to your population mean mu. So um, the answer for my last question is actually depend on, right? especially when sample size is large, uh, your X bar is actually a pretty good, a very good estimate, a very good guess of uh, your population mean. Um, so, uh, moving on in chapter uh, uh, nine and 10, there are some, uh, we will be uh, still using some of the central limit theorem ideas. So then, you know, you can do some inferences about X bar. So uh, this chapter uh, might help you there a little bit moving forward and um, thinking about the sampling distribution of X bar.